You're watching the newsroom, Islam newsroom. The news you want when you want it from the Islamic perspective. I'm Yusuf Estes and this is Islam newsroom. Okay, we're back with Islam Newsroom, the weekend update. We're talking about the issues that all of us face every day and the news that's important to us from the Islamic perspective. I'm Yusuf Estes, and for the next few minutes, we're going to be talking about news in a whole news way. <laughs> important to us is something critical, very critical, about how Muslims understand the Quran today. And a better way to say that is how Muslims don't understand the Quran today. Worldwide and on a local level both, we see again and again the same perplexing attitude. That is that so many of our youth, our children, our youngsters, our teenagers, are memorizing the Quran. And that's good but they're memorizing only the sound that they hear without knowing the meaning. In many cases, they don't even know how to read the Arabic language other than to be able to make these sounds that they produce. They're able to say, A'udhu billahi rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim But then when I ask them what does it mean, I don't know. <laughs> this is the basic understanding before you get started reciting. So that's why we want to focus on not just a little news broadcast, but an entire project to present the true meaning of the teachings of Quran in both the Arabic and the English language for those who are memorizing and trying to understand. This is not limited to Muslims only, by the way. I realize that many folks, even some of you watching right now, you're not Muslims, and some are even trying to find something wrong with Islam, and you're welcome. Go ahead, take a look. But what we want to be sure you understand is that the Quran, when it's being misrepresented, is no longer really what Islam teaches. So if you see people doing something and you say, oh, this looks like a very bad thing that's going on and blah, blah, blah. I have to tell you that if it's bad, then Islam has already made rulings against it 1,400 years ago. Now, we're going to take a short break in just a minute. But before we do, I wanted to bring you up to date on a couple of other issues. One is, what is it that we're going to be doing? Well, it's been decided by our board that we are going to have not one night or two nights, but 10 nights. Layl and Asher. If you know the Quran and you know Surah Al Fajr, it mentions this term, Layl and Asher. Allah swears by these 10 nights. And what are the 10 nights we're talking about? We're talking about Dhul Hijjah, the month of the pilgrimage. The pilgrimage to, to Mecca that all Muslims are required to do at least once in their life. Now, for those of us, and the majority of us, obviously, cannot do that because only about 3 million people are actually able to get the visas to go to Saudi Arabia, to Mecca, to do their pilgrimage in each year. And when you have over 2, what is it, 20? 2 billion, yeah. When you have more than 2 billion people and only 3 million are able to go, obviously most of us are not going, right? So, Gainas TV is going to use those 10 nights, each one of those 10 nights, with a different aspect of something about Hajj and something about reciting the Quran and, listen to this, gifts. That's right, we're going to be giving gifts to our youth in each of the places we visit during those 10 nights. Where will we be going? Well, it's going to be announced officially on Guidus TV, but I'm going to give you a heads up, a little bit of a clue. Come on in. Listen to this. We're going to be going on the East Coast. <gasps> Where? Uh, it starts with new, something new. Can you guess where it is? <laughs> All right. 
New York, New Jersey, and not New Washington, just Washington, D.C. Some of the scholars in ulama, the teachers, the presenters of the Quran, the memorizers, and those who help others memorize the Quran are joining us in each of these areas. We'll be going all the way from Washington, D.C., all the way up to New York. And each of those nights, we're going to be having programs that will be broadcast live. Inshallah, if God wills, if we can do it, Lord willing, and the creeks don't rise, that's what our intention is to do. And each place that we will be going will also be giving some of the rules of understanding the Quran and the way to pronounce it and how to implement these beautiful teachings in our lives. We'll be inviting non-Muslims to come and be with us as well to help them better understand. Christians, Jews, and others will all be working with us. Many of them already known to us, have already agreed, and we're all looking forward to it so much. The second thing that I want to tell you about before we take our break is that we are delaying our recite on TV contest so that more and more and more of you can enter. You go to our website, reciteontv.com. Upload your video. You can make it with a cell phone, with a regular camera, as you like. Upload your video, but be sure that you have the critical ingredients to make a nice video. And if it's not good, don't put it up. Make another one until you get what you like. And if you can include the meaning of what you're reciting, this is going to put you in another category for other prizes. And on the last day, the last day of those 10 days, which will also be known as Eid, the festival of the sacrifice, Eid al-Adha, that's the night we're going to be awarding the $1,000 prize. So all of that and more, and we're going to be talking about that in the program as well as the weekend update right here on Guide Us TV. So stay tuned, watch closely, and we'll be right back so we can all get guided with Guide Us TV. We're still packing these up. These are translations of Quran for our youth to know more about what it is they're reciting. I want children to know what it means. So this is why we're sending out these. What we're doing is packaging up the translations in these little plastic wraps, get them ready to mail them out. And then if you'll help us with the postage, we can do even more. These are ready to go. And we want to do at least 5,000 more during the first 10 days of Hajj, called the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, you know. And we'll tell you more about it. Keep watching Guidance TV so you can know more about what we're doing and the places we're going to be on tour giving these out. Also, how you can donate. It's right here on the screen. We're showing you right there. Donate to Islam. Look for the Quran project on there and get guided with Guide Us TV, inshallah. <laughs> Mashallah, newly converted Muslims, Mashallah, Mashallah. Oh, I love this. And you can watch it anytime if you just get the apps, the free apps for iPhones, iPads, also the smartphones. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The smartphones and the Android phones, you'll be able to do it real easy, and it is free, and you can watch it anytime. Wa alaikum salam. We're about ready to give some more shahadas and you can join us. You can also help donate. Donate online at guideus.tv. Yeah, guideus.tv slash donate. Allah Akbar. And you can be helping these people get to Islam too. Ah, Allah Akbar. Allah gives the hidayah. He guides the people with Guide Us TV. 
We're back. You're watching the Weekend Update with Islam Newsroom. I'm Yusuf Estes, and we've been talking about the subject of the understanding of the meaning of the Quran. These little, these are soft cover, by the way, these little translations of the meaning of the Quran in the English language certainly are not going to be the be-all, do-all. They're not going to be the answer to everything. They're not. But what they are is a very good introduction to make it easy for a lot of our youth to get involved to know more about the Quran. We have some larger ones if, if it, this is needed, uh, especially if somebody has a problem with sight and they need bigger text. We also have them in different languages. We also have, by the way, the Quran in the Spanish. This is, again, these are translations. This is not the Quran. Quran is Quran in Arabic. Everybody, that, so Muslim, knows that. But to understand the meaning, right now, a very critical thing, we're using these translations to help it along. Now, I want to take you to one of our websites that helps us even more. And this is called Arabic in English. I'm going to put it on here right now for you on, on our uh, screen so you can get an idea about this. How critical is it to know? Well, let me just give you an example of that right here. If you don't know the meaning, it could be a big problem. And how easy is it to learn? Well, watch this and we'll see what you think about it. This is a sample that we well, made up for you. To the next step now. And that is a few more letters. We've been talking about the letters and the connection of the letters. So let's introduce some more of the letters. I want to go to the forest now and talk about the trees in the forest. We've been out to the beach. We've talked about the pot-bellied family, and now we want to go to the forest and look at some trees and some of the things that we find out there. Well, that's a tree, or that's a stem, or that's something really big. It's not a little short thing. It's a big one, and that's called a leaf. Now, I know that a leaf looks kind of like that, but this is a leaf, and it doesn't have any leaves on it. <laughs> Maybe just a little small one off to the side. So we're going to give it a little small leaf off to the side like that. There's this little leaf right there. A leaf. See it? The little leaf. <laughs> so this is uh, where we get the A sound, but we can get a O sound from it. We can get an E sound from it. We're going to go on now, and I'm going to give you a couple more of these trees out in the forest. This one right here, look at what it's got down at the bottom of the tree. You see that? Now, how do you like that? It's kind of a tall tree. Let's say that. Say, fall. Not ta. We already had ta. You remember ta had two dots. This is tall. 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 Not tall. Don't say the L on it, but say tall. Let me hear you say it. You didn't say it very loud. I said <laughs> so you can see from that that we, we had a lot of fun putting it together, and we hope that you'll take advantage of this. Now, as far as how simple it is, you can actually go online and rent the thing to get started. What we wanted to do was to make it so it was fun to learn, not intimidating, not difficult, but actually enjoyable, so that as you progress with your learning, more and more sticks in your mind. And as you learn, hey, that's kind of fun. For instance, when we take some of the words after we've shown you how to put them together, Here's a word, bait, bait. Now, in English, we use the word bait to mean what we would put on a hook and throw it in the water to catch a fish, bait. But in Arabic, bait is where you live, not where the fish lives, but where you live in the bait. Got it? Now, speaking of fish, we'll teach you the word because when you eat fish, you want the fish because it tastes so good and you want the fish for your stomach, right? Well, the name of it in Arabic is stomach. A fish is a stomach. Stomach for the stomach that you eat after you catch it with the bait, which you can eat it in your 
bait in your house. Now you've got two words that we used and played with them, made them fun to understand, kind of joke around. But now you remember, bait, house, stomach, fish, bingo. And that's what we wanted to do. Throughout the course, we're using these techniques again and again and again, over and over and over. But wait till you see what we're going to be doing during those 10 nights of Gulhidja, those 10 nights, Layl and Asher. So if you just tuned in and I was talking about that, we will be taking Guide Us TV up and down the coastline from Washington, D.C. all the way into New York. That's right. And we're going to be in some surprising places that we haven't mentioned yet because these have to be confirmed and the scholars and teachers along the way have to give us their word that they're going to be involved and the releases so that we can put it on television. We also have a lot of students lined up that we want to interview and bring them out and let them talk about the Quran and how the meaning of the Quran helps them how to, to know how to deal with things in their life every day. So the everyday experiences that we have, like when people tease the girls about why you have to cover up. Well, what's a good answer for that? You're going to find that out while we're traveling. Or why is it that the men are growing these beards? Well, we're going to surprise them with an answer for that one that makes them shocked. Yes. And why should somebody follow the Quran? Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Do you even know what Quran means? And what about Allah? How come you don't believe in God? Hold on. Wait till you find out what the word Allah means, where it comes from, and then you'll tell me, especially if you're not a Muslim but you believe in a God, let's find out what you believe about your God and compare it. We're going to have a lot of fun when we do this because our opportunity to engage with each other, talk with each other, and share is what it's all about. This is not to put anybody down. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not here for debates. That's not the point. What we want to do is encourage dialogue and discussions so that you can benefit and we can benefit and share together. So we grow together. We share together, we grow together, and we do it all for the sake of living together. Because when there is love, there's understanding, then there's peace. Without love, without understanding, you won't find the true peace in human relationships that are so needed. Quran does not insist that everybody has to be a Muslim. As a matter of fact, it admits immediately that most of the people will not be Muslims. So along the way, while cautioning Muslims about what it is to be a Muslim, how to be a Muslim, what we should do, what we shouldn't do, it also explains how to deal with people who choose not to be. How do we deal with the subjects of homosexuality? How do we deal with the subject of people who have what they call open marriages? And how do we deal, as Muslims, with the subject of people who want to just live together? How do we deal with that? What do we say about that? Or what is it we don't say about that? How do we deal with the subjects that face all of us every single day, whether we're at school, whether we're at work, we're going to or from school or work, and when we're visiting someone's home, they're not Muslim, what should we do, what should we not do? What if they're celebrating Christmas? That's coming up not too many months away, isn't it? And what about Thanksgiving? What about Halloween? What does Islam teach us as Muslims to do and not do, but also how do we interact with other people who celebrate these different things? Then also, how do they look at our celebrations and how can we, uh, what are we allowed to do? Are we allowed to let them come and see us pray, for instance? Can they come in the mosque? We'll find out about that in our tour. We're going to be recording these programs, so if you'd like to be there with us, you'd like to enjoy this with us, please come out. But be prepared. Think about how you look, how you dress, if you're, especially if you're not a Muslim. But think about this because this is something we're going to be airing internationally on our satellite all over the United States and Canada, on our antennas in New York, New Jersey, Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, here in Columbus, Ohio, and Los Angeles, California. And let's not forget about the Internet. And hey, what about the apps? 
People are watching us on apps everywhere from Japan, Russia, Europe, South America, South Africa, around the entire world. And that's why it's so critical for you and I to share the real message of real Islam in the English language. All right? So, and again, I'm, I'll repeat what I said before. The Quran didn't come in English. So when we translate it, it is deficient, yes. But at least we have a place to start, something to help people immediately to know. I was a Muslim for over two years before I even tried to speak anything in Arabic other than to say, Salaam Alaikum, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> that was it, because I was afraid. I was too shy. I thought, well, people will make fun of me. But the reality is, I really don't mind if people want to make fun of me trying to learn. What I mind more than anything else is not knowing what my religion really teaches. Does Islam teach us to do terrorism? Does Islam really tell people to go out and kill innocent people? Is that what it says? Or does it say the opposite in the Quran? I want people to see for themselves and know what the Arabic says, what it means. And we can do this. We can make it happen, inshallah ta'ala. If Almighty, the most merciful, all high, if he will allow us the opportunity to share this message, well, I have to say that this is something that the prophets themselves were tasked by Almighty Allah to do this. This was their job. And today we have no more prophets. So it's the job of you and I to put our hands together to make this happen. Something that when people see it and understand it, they can go, oh, wow, I didn't know that. I like that. That's nice. Some might even say, I like that for me. How can I know more about Islam? Or, How could I be a Muslim? They come to me every single week, every week, asking me questions. Just two days ago, I had the great chance, one, two, three days ago, sorry. I had a great chance to meet with a gentleman from Mexico. And after a discussion, beautiful discussion, he realized that all along that the things that he felt and he had things that he'd been thinking about in his own mind and his dreams had led him to the very conclusion to what Islam teaches. And Allah led him to us, we shared, and he said, well, this is what I believe, this is what I naturally want to do. Alhamdulillah that we had some, another wonderful brother, by another coincidence of Allah, bring us many copies, not just one or two, many copies of the translation into the Spanish language. We presented that to him. And he had another one, too. It was great. It, we had a wonderful day. And he became a Muslim. Alhamdulillah. And just a few days before that, we had another gentleman come to us who is studying catechism for the Catholic Church as a, I want to say it like an interim priest, sort of taking, uh, preparing himself to take the vows of priesthood. Yeah? And in our discussion, he said, you know, many of the things you're saying are what we believe, but we just, you know, don't know how to explain it. The more we talked, the more he thought about it, he said, you know what? I need this. He accepted Islam. That's right. Now, he asked us to keep it down until he can make his uh, formal um, announcement, if you will. And obviously, he'll be leaving his position. The most important thing about all of this is how do we, I or you, how do we, you and I, get closer to Allah from this effort? Because if Allah accepts what we're doing, this could be the very thing that gets us forgiven. This could be the thing that turns the lives of many people around, but most important is our own lives. I personally, Yusuf has this, I want to go to Jannah. I want to be in paradise. And I want you to be in paradise too. This should be the attitude that all of us have. We should never have the attitude that I want to see a Muslim go to hell. That should never, ever, ever, ever be your attitude. In fact, you shouldn't want to see anybody go to hell. This is known from the Quran. Did you know that? Actually, we don't 
hate people. We hate the evil that people do. Think about that for just a minute. Hold on. Allah tells us in the Quran, let's go to the Quran and examine for ourselves what does it say. We flip open the Quran to chapter 3, verse 110. And we find, okay, it says, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajeem, kuntin khayra umatin, ukri jatlan nasi, tapmaruna bil maruf, wa tanhawna anhil munkar, wa tu'minuna billah. That's only half the verse. I'll read the rest of it to you in a minute. But it says, you are the best of people ever for all mankind because you enjoin al maruf. You forbid al munkar and you believe in Allah. What is maruf? It is the ultimate good of calling people to the belief in one God and following the deen of the way the way of al-Islam, of surrender and submission, the voluntary servitude of God, to do God's will on earth as it is in heaven. This is the meaning of deen al-Islam. But there's more. And if the people of the Bible, huh? Yes. Jews and Christians are mentioned here. If the people of the Bible had faith, that's better for them. True faith. True faith. Walau amana ahu kitab. Amana. If they believe. Believe what? Believe in Allah, his angels, his books, his prophets, the day of judgment, and the cutter or predestination, determined outcome of Allah. It's better for them. Listen to this. Men whom, from them, there are some who have this belief. Huh. What? Yes. Yes. Keep reading. But most of them, they are corrupt and disobedient to the commandments. Fasik. That's what it says. But that's not all. It goes on to tell us more about them. They do... They won't do anything serious harm to you, but a little. If they come to combat against you, they want to fight against you in combat, they will turn back and they shall get no help from God. Shame is thrown on them like a tent wherever they're found except under the promise of Allah and from men, if there's a promise of protection. They draw on themselves anger from Allah. Upon them is thrown severe poverty. This is because they rejected the signs of Almighty Allah. They killed the prophets outright, without right, and because that they rebelled and crossed all bounds. This is talking about, if you read the Bible, you'll see that that's exactly what happened. This is telling you what is happening in the Bible, as well as what can happen today. Let's go on. It says, verse 113, chapter 3, Ali Imran, not all of them are alike. From the people of the book, some of them do stand for what is right. They read and they declare the signs of God all night long. They prostrate themselves in devotion to Almighty God. They believe in the law. They believe in the last day. They enjoin what is right and they forbid what is wrong. And they hurry to do good deeds. They are in the ranks of the righteous. It says that in the Quran. So for you Muslims who didn't know it, our book tells us clearly the Jews and the Christians are in the same category as people who call themselves Muslims in this respect according to what the Quran said, in this respect, in that there are some believers, there are some disbelievers, there are some who try and some who don't try. For those who accept blindly what other people tell them that is not really the message that their prophets sent to them, that's shame on them, isn't it? But brothers and sisters, we have Muslims living today in the world, and I've been in their countries and seen it, who absolutely are doing things that are not in the Quran, not in the teachings of Muhammad, and yet they claim it's Islam. And you can watch it on the 6 o'clock news and see for yourself. That is not 
Islam. We've got a break coming up right now. I want you to stay right where you are, though, because we're going to be right back after that with more Weekend Update, the news we need from the Islamic perspective. Stay right there and get guided with Guide Us TV. We're ready to mail out a lot more of these translations of the meaning of the Quran to our youth who are reciting, but they don't know the meaning. I would like for you guys to join us to help us put it out. All you have to do is go online, donate to Islam, look for the Quran Project. Whatever you donate helps us pay for the postage. We've already got them. They're ready to go. Need more postage. Can you do that? Okay, do that. Donate to Islam.com. And inshallah, Allah accept from all of us and get guided with Guidus TV. Get guided, get guided, oh, Guidus TV. I'm Yusuf Estes for Guidus TV. Are you fed up with watching some of these commercial channels that are out there now, the information that's coming to us, twisted or improper, and things that we don't want our kids to watch? So that's why we have Guidus TV. And we're broadcasting all over the United States, Canada, Alaska, Hawaii, the Caribbean islands, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. No commercial interruptions, no advertising, and no subscription rate. All of that to keep it free, to keep Islam out there in front of the people, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, enjoying and benefiting from these great shows and our live programs coming to us on a regular basis from great scholars in the United States, Canada, and around the world, showing us, teaching us in the English language how to deal with the problems we all face every day from the Islamic perspective. That's what I'm talking about. So we all come away with a much better understanding and a way to deal with life's problems. Ah. Get guided, get guided, oh, guide us TV. We're back. You're watching the Weekend Update with Islam Newsroom. I'm Yusuf Estes, and for the next few minutes, we're going to be talking about something very important that's coming up in the lives of all the Muslims around the world. And we're talking about the month, the lunar month, on the Islamic calendar called Dhul Hijjah. Right now, we're approximately in the middle or so of the month of Shawwal. We had Ramadan, if you know what's Ramadan, when we were fasted. Then we have the Shawal, right? And then we have Al-Qaeda, and then we have the uh, Dhul Hijjah. So in Dhul Hijjah, this is the month when we have the Hajj. Hijjah, Hajj. Maybe that's related, huh? Let's find out about that too. But what we did one time, some years back, when I was visiting in England, we did a program, myself, and Sister Yvonne Ridley. We talked about simply Hajj. I'd like to show you that right now. So let's take a look for ourselves and see about that. Take a look, watch, and inshallah, let's all get guided. and welcome to this special edition preparing for Hajj. I have with me Sheikh Yusuf Estes and the first time that we ever met was actually when, when we were performing Hajj. Well, yeah, but we met on the telephone. We, and, but actually seeing each other, was, I was uh, surprised. I was in Hajj. We were going to do that TV thing from mm -hmm. uh, out in Mina. And, uh, yeah, I saw you over there, and I said, so now I know what the lady looks like was with the horse. Well, that was my first ever hatch, and it was um, an amazing experience for me. How many had you been on? Uh, now, I think 
Uh, well, this one coming up, I think, makes six for us. Mm -hmm. So we'll be doing Hajj, and any of you out there would like to join us, we, we hope you'll do that, come and be with us for Hajj. And uh, we should be pretty easy to find. We'll, I'll be wearing two towels, and uh, but never mind that. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it, it is quite daunting. I, I must admit, when I was given the opportunity uh, to go with the Islam channel, I barely had time to prepare. And in some ways that was great because I just went straight out. But for many new Muslims, in fact for many Muslims, you know, when it's a first time experience and they're building up and preparing, what advice would you give to a Muslim who is about to go out to perform Hajj for the first time? The best advice for, is the advice that was given to me by Yusuf Kabachi, the Imam of the Masjid in, in Dallas, Texas, where I, I went to get my advice from him. By the way, his daughter is Marwa Kabaji, the one from the Turkish who had to get out of town because she wore, oh, she was wow. elected to Parliament. Uh -huh. you remember? That's his daughter. Uh -huh. And they, because she wore the hijab in the Parliament, they kicked her out. So, anyhow, another subject. But anyway, he gave my wife and I very good advice, and uh, he said that whatever you do, you take everything easy, step at a time. Be sure you get hooked up with a good group that knows what's going on. You need to have somebody help you with that. But uh, one thing he told us, don't rent your hotel room over the phone. Why is that? Because you won't be there when you get there. <laughs> but now they've changed all that. It's much uh -huh. easier now. It's required by the Saudi government that you go through somebody that's registered. Mm -hmm. Because so many of the people would, would find that they had no place to stay when they got there. You wouldn't find the person you were looking for. Your reservation is gone. But well, I think those no. safeguards are pretty much in, in place in every country now. And, of course, they need a Hajj visa, so you can only get your Hajj visa through an accredited well, agent. Well, uh, they have to be approved agent. Mm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Another thing that makes a difference, since 1993, when I first made Hajj, the first time, uh, that the, the government of Saudi Arabia has improved a lot of the conditions over there. Mm -hmm. They have taken the initiative to uh, really research and find out what will work and what we can do to make things without lessening the real Hodge or taking away from what Hodge is requiring, but at the same time making it so that they can facilitate the ease of the pilgrims when they go. It is amazing when you imagine, you know, all those millions of uh, brothers and sisters converging into one area. Well, do you know that usually it's anywhere from two and a half to three million, all the way up to five or even six million estimate on, on some occasions to have all these people, you know, trying to do the same thing at the same time. Well, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Yeah, what we want to do now, because this is not the whole purpose of our program, is to just talk about uh, this particular video. You can find this in many other videos. I want to show you how to do that. Go to your computer. You can do it on your phone if you have internet connection. And just type in search for Islam. Okay? Searchforislam.com. Let me put this mic back on. Alhamdulillah. By the way, we were able, to, because of some of the donations we received, we were able to get some more equipment. That's being installed this week, by the way. And things should be a lot better, especially for Recite on TV. Some of you wanted to know what happened to Recite on TV. I have to tell you, it, this was uh, a long time coming, but we got the equipment. And it's whether or not we can get the technicians to get it installed properly. But I want it working so that we can do more Recite on TV all this coming week and the following week, etc., etc. And now let's get back to what we're talking about. Searchforislam.com. All right, now on this, we also call it Shake Google, by the way. And what you can do is type in H-A-J-J. -J. That's all you got to do. Type that in, H-A-J-J. -J. And what's going to pop up at the bottom of the page, look at this, see that? These are videos. These are all different videos that you can watch step by step. And it says, for instance, let's start at the top. What is Hajj? and then the pre-Islamic Hajj. Now, some of the people that criticize us, saying that you guys, you do this, you worship that, they're taking it from the time before Islam because Arabs did have pilgrimages. They had prophets. They also had gods. But 
not necessarily the right God or the right prophet. So we'll, we'll talk about that in other programs. But anyway, so uh, Dr. Bill L. Phillips gives us a beautiful video for that. Next, we talk about the Muslim pilgrimage to Mecca. Then after that, just ask Islam, can women perform hajj without being accompanied by a guardian, a mahram? Preconditions for hajj. What types of hajj are there? The call of Ibrahim, Abraham the prophet. And then just ask Islam again, talking about a woman performing hajj with other women. And this is all interesting stuff that you can learn about hajj. If you look to the very bottom, you'll see there's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What those are are more pages on Search for Islam to help you get more answers. You see that? Each one of these has about 10 different programs that we're offering you. So that means about 100 programs that we've got out here telling you all about Hajj. What about doing Hajj twice in the same year? How could that happen? Well, it did happen in 2006, and we talked about that because it's in a, the lunar year, no, it was fine. But there were at one end and the other end of a sun calendar. It just by coincidence, the last of the sun uh, calendar in the first of the sun calendar, so that it looked like you were having two hodges the same year. There, and we just played with that, talked about it, but it's just the difference of, uh, there's 11 days difference between the two kinds. Then if you want to look through here, these words that you see on here, these are words in a cloud. It's called uh, something like that. You click on it and you can find out for instance, terrorism. Over here on the left, we have terrorism. I'm going to click it. Did you see that? And then we find out something about terrorism and what happens. What's going on with that? And I would like to share with you this one. I'm going to put another video up here, letting our technician know that. I'm going to put this on. Will Smith, Muhammad Ali, they're going to talk about it. Let's listen. Sizes, colors, and religions. This man might be the most famous person in the world. He's one of the greatest heroes of our time, and he is a Muslim. It was hate, not religion, that motivated the horrible acts of September 11th. And in the wake of these events, nothing could be more un American than to respond to mindless hatred with blind vengeance. My friend and I want you to remember that, and that we are strongest when we stand together. Champ? I'm here because of the terrible thing that happened the other day. I'm a Muslim. I've been a Muslim for 20 years. And I'm against killing, violence, and all Muslims are against it. Thank you. People should know the real truth about this law. You know me, I'm a boxer. I'm called the greatest of all time. People recognize me for being a boxer and a man of truth. And I wouldn't be here representing this law if it was really like the terrorists made it look. I think that all the people should know the truth and come to recognize the truth because this law is peace against killing, murder, and the terrorists and the people doing that in the name of Islam of our own. And if I had a chance, I'd do something about it. MashaAllah, I think you got the idea. I'm sorry that the volume was kind of weak on that. The, the point that he's making, though, he said, as he said, I'm a boxer. And if, if, if Islam was terrorism, I wouldn't be here talking about it. And certainly we agree with that too. What we find, though, that Allah tells us in the Quran that, and I want to tell you, this is in Surah Maida, the table spread out, chapter 5, verse 8. It says, Ya you ladina amanu, O you who have real faith in Almighty God, stand out firmly for God, for Allah as just witness for just and fair dealing. And don't let the hatred of others make you lean towards doing wrong and get away from justice. You must be just. That is next to being pious, being righteous. That's your taqwa. 
and fear Allah. Allah. Fear Allah's punishment because Allah is well acquainted with what you're doing. I wanted to remind us of that very important verse because I see that hatred can bring hatred from both sides and it just keeps going on and on and gets worse and worse. But if you'll stop and take the time to listen to other people and return their hatred with love. And if you can't do that, return their hatred with peace, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. We can make a difference, brothers and sisters. It's up to us. We're the Muslims. We should have that understanding in our hearts and in our minds. I also wanted to tell you something that's in the same chapter, by the way. And this is so clear that I wanted to relate it to you, talking about the innocent lives. Same chapter, chapter 5, verse 32. Allah tells us that on the basis of some of the things discussed right before that, he said, he ordered that the children of Israel, that if anybody kills a person, if anybody kills any innocent person, you know, unless it is for somebody who is killing people, then it will be like you killed all of mankind. Listen to this. And if anybody saves the life of an innocent person, it's like you saved the life of all mankind. I'm reading it to you from a translation, but you can look it up if you know the Arabic and see what it says. Verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 32. Does that sound like what we're seeing on the 6 o'clock news? No. Save an innocent person, it's like you saved all of humanity. Kill one innocent person. Brothers and sisters, if you didn't know this, I'll share it with you so that you can understand in clear English. Whoever takes the life of an innocent person, unless, unless they turn their lives around, unless they are so sincere in their repentance for what they have done, unless they're willing to go back to the relatives of that person and say, oh, you may kill me now. You know what I mean? Because I'm sincere what I said. I did something wrong. Oh, my God, you know, this is horrible. Unless that person can make that kind of tawbah, repentance and restitution, and most people won't, they will deserve what they get in the next life. Eternal punishment. You've got to understand Islam is not being lenient just because you call yourself a Muslim. You're no different than anybody else. You must always be fair, be just, and be prepared because Allah, he will be sure that we all get paid what's due to us, except by his mercy. This is very serious, brothers and sisters, because we have too many of these websites out here. Some of them are even put there not by people that are out there doing this, high, this stuff, but rather they're by people who want to make money because they get paid for being so-called security or terrorist experts. Happy to see a Muslim child do something stupid like get on a website and start promoting something. We spoke about that in the news on Wednesday night. Talked about it in details. But it's still your responsibility to know the difference between what Islam teaches and what it doesn't teach. If you're taking your Islam from the internet, if you're taking it from television, you're making a mistake. Even if you're taking your Islam from us now, here, watching this, this is not why we're here. We're here to encourage you to seek real knowledge from real scholars of real Islam. We're giving you some basics, some fundamentals, so you can be able to judge for yourself what's the right way. Who are the right people that I, I do want to talk to? And you cannot do that if you don't at least have a basic grasp of understanding of what Islam is. Islam is to believe in Allah as one and only God, 
without any partners. That's the first and foremost thing. If you don't have that together, the rest of it's not going to matter. Start with that. So this is called basic aqidah in the Arabic language, the fundamentals of understanding the basic of belief in Islam. Something also called a tawheed, which in Arabic it comes from the number one, wahid. Tawheed from the word wahid, meaning one or what? Monotheism, one God. These are the basic premise that we build on because if we know there's God and we worship that God, we want to be close to God in this life, the next life. If this is what we want, then he will provide for us through the Quran, through the teachings of Muhammad, through good scholars who have the right understanding, how we can be good, loving, respectful, contributing, people in society, people for our families to rely on, positive individuals working together. A network, a network that builds a solid wall, a solid, beautiful, strong wall together that puts good away from bad to make what is called al-Furqan separate the good from the bad, to have the foundation that gets away from the evil, away from the devil, and all that he calls to. I don't want to turn this into a sermon because I, I want to keep this on a level of more like the news that we need, the news that we need to know what is really happening today is basically from shaitan. The stuff that you're hearing about murders and rapes and killings, whether it's from supposed uh, uh, religion or non-religion people, that it's not, it, it, it still affects people, doesn't it? Theft, robberies, cheating, lying, all of this uh, stealing, hurting other people, uh, uh, damaging them, taking their property, all of this, it doesn't matter. It's still wrong. Islam teaches that. Christianity teaches that. Judaism teaches that. Many religions teach that. The fact that some people do it who claim that they are in a religion, I will tell you, while they are doing that thing, they are not in their religion anymore because their religion calls for something else, just as Islam does. I want you to think about these things, boys and girls, because as you grow up, you will see a lot of things happen. You might see things beyond your belief, but remember this, any good that anybody does has already been prescribed in Islam, and the evil that they do is already denied by Islam. So if you see something bad, stay away from it. You see something good, go to it. Does it make sense? Pretty easy to figure out. Let's go to one more level before we wrap it up tonight. I want to talk about rights. Everybody wants their rights, isn't that, isn't that true? I want my rights. I have the right to free speech. I have the right to gather with my friends together and talk about what I want to talk about. I have the right to work. I have the right to play. I have the right to many things in my country that I have the right to do. But do I ever think about the other side of it? Whether we're talking about people's rights, parents' rights, husbands' rights, women's rights, children's rights, grandparents' rights, animal rights, still it comes back to there's another side of all of this. Limits. 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 The limitations that go along with rights are very profound because as much as you want your rights, you have to understand that other people have rights too. Your rights stop where other people's rights begin. You don't have the right to force other people to believe what you believe. You do not have the right to take things that belong to other people. You don't have the right to usurp authority take away other people's positions. 
This, as Muslims, is very critical, especially when they start talking about overthrowing governments. That is not a, a permitted in Islam. Did you know that? It is not permitted to operate in that manner. You, I know some of you are thinking, no, 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 these people are bad, they need to be kicked out. I'm telling you, go back and study our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and what he really taught. Allah puts people over you that you deserve. When people, you and I, are acting irresponsibly and we are taking advantage of our rights to the extent that we take away other people's rights, then Allah will put people over us that will take all of our rights. That's what happens. It's only when people are willing to stay within the boundaries that all of these ideologies will work. Whether we're talking about the American Constitution, the Sharia of Islam, or the commandments of Moses, all of these ideologies that come together, they're beautiful, beautiful, wonderful things that are being said, right? But if somebody will only take what they want and reject the rest, then it's not the same anymore, is it? And so this is what we want to focus on. Now, when we come back in our next program, and we'll be talking about more of the stuff that we're going to do and places we're going to go, I want you to promise that you will share this information with others. Help us do that. Won't you do that? Because this way we can all get guided with Guidance TV. Until next time, peace. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.